important marker. The House Speaker cleared a critical hurdle yesterday, 217 to 215. That, the final tally of a Wednesday vote on a $1.5 trillion debt limit raise. Now give Speaker McCarthy his due. He kept his unruly caucus together, and he won, just barely, but he won, passage of his negotiating blueprint. But now, the job gets harder. The White House says their calculus does not change, and that any Republican push for spending cuts must be dealt with after the debt limit is raised without any conditions. With me in studio to share their reporting and their insights, Sungmin Kim of the Associated Press, Tia Mitchell of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, and USA Today's Francesca Chambers. So, and let's start with the speaker. Again, this plan goes nowhere. The Democratic Senate won't pass it. The Democratic president won't sign it. But it is a negotiating blueprint, and it was a big test of loyalty within the Republican family to the speaker. He says, I win. It's up to you, Mr. President. You said at the very beginning we had to show you a plan, even though the Democrats have shown no plan. Not only did we show you a plan, we're the only ones to pass a plan. So I think it's up to you now. Whether the economy goes in any trouble, it's you. Because the Republicans raised the debt limit. You have not. Right there, the blame game. If the economy goes into any trouble, it's on you. We have a, a long way to go, although maybe not a lot of time to get there. The government, the Treasury now says sometime in early June, probably. It's a big win for the Speaker politically. But does it make it harder or easier to get to the finish line now that you have the Republicans saying take our plan and the President saying go away? I think it makes it harder in some standpoints because... The plan that Republicans have passed is really not palatable in the Democratic Senate, as you noted. As you noted, it's definitely not something the White House is going to support. So I think now Chuck Schumer in the Senate are probably going to try to put their heads together, of course, working with Republicans to see what they can pass in that chamber. But it's going to look very different than what the House passed. And therefore, whatever comes out of the Senate is going to have a hard time getting approval in the House. So you're kind of still at a stalemate, even though the House Republicans have passed some version of lifting the debt limit. And, and so one of the challenges here is can the president keep Senate Democrats unified? Kevin McCarthy did his job, just barely, but he did his job. He kept the Republican family together. Now it goes to the Senate. You have a number of Senate Democrats from red states, from Trump states, on the ballot next year. Mitch Landrieu, who speaks for the president on issues like this, the economy and the infrastructure, says we're not going to negotiate. We will not negotiate about throwing the American economy off of a cliff. At what point, uh, Mitch, does the president's refusal to negotiate with the House leadership become unsustainable? Well, again, what, what the president has said is he is happy to negotiate over the budget and the vision of the country. But this is really not a complicated issue. They ought to just pass a clean debt bill and get past that. Um, in his view, it's not complicated. House Republicans say we're not going to do that. The White, the White House has tried to present this as some fringe and extremist Republicans wanting to pursue this route. But we, we heard last night Mitt Romney say, and he's certainly, you know, uh, he's certainly a no extremist Republican, uh, say that he thinks that there needs to be a compromise on this issue. And that's what you're hearing from the centrists. You know, you have someone you were mentioning, Democrats. You have Joe Manchin, who could be someone that you would want to look at in this conversation as well. The president has made it clear that if they want to get rid of things that he did in the Inflation Reduction Act or anything that's on his agenda, that those things are off the table. He's not going to revisit that. So I think to Tia's point then, all right, what else are you willing to compromise? Uh, and so we're at this moment where this has been done. In the White House position, you get it historically. They say this has always been done, no strings attached. And then we talk about spending cuts in the budget conversation. It's happened 78 separate times since 1960. 49 times under Republican presidents, 29 times under Democratic presidents. But here's the issue. Uh, as Rahel just said, the economy is not pro behaving, performing as it normally does. There are surprises all the time. Why should our politics be the same, or should they be the same? The White House position is they should be the same. Listen to this from Ken Rogoff, a very noted economist. It affects everyone getting Social Security checks, debt holders. I don't know, even know where to stop. You can get hyperbolic about how bad it will be. I would just say I don't want to find out. Uh, so you have a, he's a Democratic president. He's a president up for re-election. Uh, the U.S. economy is at risk here. The global economy is at risk here. And I would argue his reelection campaign also at risk here, even though he insists and they believe they can get Republicans to take the blame. So do we do this differently this time or do we stay locked into this? You go next. It really depends. I do think it becomes as unsustainable fairly at some point in time for the White House to keep its position because you're going to have uh, senators in the middle, such as Joe Manchin, saying 
President Biden, there's a deficiency of leadership here in your refusal to talk with uh, talk with Republicans. But we can also take lessons of the last really nasty debt limit fight in 2011. We did not breach the limit then, but it got kind of chaotic close to the deadline. You know, you had the first credit downgrade in history. It did rock the stock markets. Obviously, things turned out OK at the end. And Democrats took the lessons from that debt limit fight and not wanting to negotiate, which is why you see the hardline stance that you see coming now from Democrats in Congress and the White House. But Republicans take the lesson that, well, President Obama negotiated with House Republicans then, so we need to do it now because we control the House and we get a say too. So a stare down for at least a short period of time and then we'll see someone, maybe, we'll blink at some point. I'm moving on to a